Let's start up again with some more GG plots. <clears throat> Last time we left off with uh, the iris data set being plotted here on the bottom right hand side. You can see that you can kind of cluster it maybe with all the red dots and you can see the green and blue are kind of mixed together. And it has a legend and you can see the x-axis and the y-axis uh, have labels but let's modify those labels to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So, and that being said, let's start from scratch so that we can all be on the same page. We're going to do a new, we'll do an R notebook. And we will just clear all this out. Remember how to insert a chunk. Command option I for insert. And now we have an R chunk ready to go. We'll put a header in there saying uh, we're going to do a scatter plot. Scatter plot one. And I'm going to show you a little trick with this R markdown as well that I didn't show you in the previous lessons. Let's get started by first doing a quick view of the iris data set once again. I'm just going to do command enter on that. And we have sepal length, width, petal length, petal width, and the species. So the uh, first four features are numerics. They're basically decimal numbers or doubles. And then the species is what we call a factor or a categorical variable. Now having like a species called setosa versus um, verse C color, whatever these species are, there's not one that's better than the other. So just be careful when you deal with factors that if there's no true order to them, um, that matters. And it doesn't matter. It depends on the situation. But in this case, the species has no order. Satosa is not any greater than verse color, and, and that's not any greater than virginica, right? So there's no order involved. So these are factors. Let's close this out. We're not going to really view it. We want to plot this. Remember, we did uh, we did library ggplot2. We load that. In fact, what we should do is probably load the libraries in one section here and say load libraries. And whatever libraries we're going to use, we'll put right here. And we can hit the play button. Now it's loaded in our memory. We can use it. Now let's talk about uh, the first plot. So we'll say this is going to be a scatter plot. And command option I, we get another R chunk. All right, so now let's do a quick plot, GG plot, and we're going to plot the iris data set. Remember, if I hit command enter on this now, it's going to be a blank slate. Now, because I'm in an R markdown and I'm in a notebook, you see that the plot is actually within line, in line with my notebook file here. It's not over here where the plots are. All right, so we can make that a little bit smaller so that you can view it better. Now, we don't want just a blank, blank spot, we want an aesthetic. So AES, remember, is the aesthetic for the second parameter in ggplot. And we'll set an X equals and a Y equals. So X equals what? Oh, I forget um, what they're called. Sepal length, sepal width, whatever. Oh, maybe SEPA. See, it doesn't auto fill right now. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna just go ahead and type in iris dollar sign. Then I have my list right here. So let's just plot the length versus the, let's do sepal.length and petal.length, just for fun. All right, so that's my x. I'm gonna make my y is equal to the petal.length. Okay, we have that there, and we'll close that off with another parenthesis, and let's run this and see what we have. All right, so again, we're back where we were. We have a grid, we have x-axis and a y-axis, we have some grids with some uh, actual tick marks on there, five, six, seven, eight, and two, four, six. All right, so we're missing the actual plot itself because we never told this to, we said, hey, we're gonna get ready for a plot, but I never said what to plot or what type of plot. So just like math, we just do a plus sign and I'm gonna add some space here and I'm gonna type in the geom point. That's the scatter plot. And once I hit the play button on that, we finally have our plot. And now remember, in our aesthetics, we can actually add a color as well if we chose. So comma, and we can do color equals. So we're going to set the color equal to that species, the categorical or the factor. So that's going to be the iris dot species. Now when we hit the run button, we have those colors. And here we are. Now, what I want to show you is that you can store these plots as just like anything else, another variable. So I'm going to call this uh, my scatter plot, right? Set that equal to all of that. 
and you see nothing happens because all I did was say, hey, make this plot, don't display it, but store it into the variable called my scatter plot. Now, how do we display it? It depends, but most likely you can just type in my scatter plot and have it run within this chunk. If not, I'll show you a different method. I'll show you both methods just in case. So there it is, it runs. You can actually put it in a print function as well, and this might be a safer bet, I'm not too sure. Uh, and it does the same thing. So if you do run into problems, just remember that you can print the plot as well. But now that I have this, I can use this scatter plot for anything I want. I don't have to retype all of this every single time I want to create this plot. Pretty cool. Now, what do we want to do with my scatter plot? I want to change the X and Y axis labels and I want to put a title on there. Okay, so that's scatter plot one. We'll call the scatter plot uh, no title just for fun, because I want to show you something else here. Now remember, when you save your markdown file, it creates an HTML file. Let's go ahead and save it now, Command S, and I'm going to save this as uh, scatter plots. doesn't matter. Save it. I'm going to go over to my files over here, and you will see, hopefully, oof, down at the bottom I have scatterplots.rmd and scatterplots.nb.html. Let's open up that HTML file, open in a web browser, and I'll bring it over for you to see here. And we have a cool, transparent, all the codes there, notebook file, reproducible. Why is it reproducible? I can take anybody that has R and say, hey, click on this code and say, download my RMD file. Now that's powerful. You can hide all the code if you wanna show management, just a plot, you can, you can show all the code. You can actually set all these, of course, throughout your uh, notebook file, RMD file. Let's close this out. And what I wanted to show you is something cool. Uh, instead of doing load libraries and scatter plots in this in this manner, I want to lowercase that. Let's add tabs. I never showed you tabs. So what I can do is I can create a, a tab. Let's do one header and say plots, and I'm going to put open bracket, and I'm going to type in dot tab set. So what that means is anything that's a greater level indentation than the one hashtag, like the two, it's going to create itself a tag or a tab. And until I go back to the one header, the one, I don't know what the term is, it'll continue to create tabs. I'll show you what I mean. It'll make more sense. So for example, this one here, let's save it, command S, and it automatically should. In fact, you can run it all as well, run all. Uh, just to be sure that everything's run, I saved it, Command S, you don't want to run into any problems. Click on your notebook file again, open in web browser, and again I'll bring it over. And you're not going to see the tab so much because there's only one. You can see the tab, but there's no link to click, right? So it's under uh, scatterplot no title. That's what this is under. Now you'll really notice it. In fact, we can keep this open. Let me go ahead and add another second level head in. Oop. I clicked it. So let's go below this one and do a second level head in and call this scatter plot with title. And remember we do command option I and remember we saved that scatter plot as my scatter plot. So we can reuse this. We can reuse this. That's what's cool about it. So we're going to take that and we're going to add something to it. What are we going to add? We're going to add labels. So we're going to just call it L-A-B-S. And you can see in the yellow um, information bar there, it says title, subtitle, caption, etc., etc. So let's go ahead and just type in title equals and just say my scatter plot. I'm going to run that, make sure it runs. And you can see it has a little title at the top. And I'm going to save it. But what I really want to show you too is once it's saved, let's go back to that, that notebook file, which is right here. I refresh it. And you see I have multiple tabs. So that's pretty cool. You can have multiple tabs anywhere you want in your markdown. Let's go back over here and I'll show you how to get um, that down to a, um, another level is you just go back and you start a level one heading and say uh, new stuff here. And then we can do, we can talk about it. I can add an R chunk. Um, and what I can do is under new stuff, I can also make more tabs, dot tab set, don't forget. And then now any second level header, so second level header will have 
will be a new tab. New tab again. And I'm just giving you the idea here. Here, that must be my Boston coming out. Idea, idea two, we save this, we send it to our boss, we click on the file again, open in web browser, and here we go. We have multiple tabs for this top one, scroll down, and we have new stuff with multiple tabs here. In fact, you can have tabs within tabs within tabs. You can continue to do this. I'm not sure how many levels. I think it's something maybe six, but I could be wrong. So you get the idea. That's how we want to do our tab sets. Have fun with the tabs, playing around with them. And let's go back up. Let's clean this mess up here. I was playing around with second and third level tabs. We don't really need those at the moment. So, so cool. We have our second tab with the my scatter plot label. Let's go ahead and create a third tab. And we'll do that with a second level header and say scatter plot with title and axes labels. And I'm not going to get into all of the different things you can do here because as we go through these tutorials, we'll add more, we'll subtract more. You're going to start Googling this stuff, Stack Overflow in it. You're going to find some really cool ways to twist and turn the text, make it centered. And I will get through some of that as we go, but I just, I wanted to give you a taste of it here. All right. So what did we do here? We have my scatter plot plus we added the labels. We didn't save it as anything, but we could have but I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and control C on my my scatter plot and let's let's do um, the title again, but this time we're going to add the labels. Um, oh, was it? Uh, labs, L-A-B-S. And we're going to say title equals my title, but this time we will add the axes as well. So X equals um, sepal space length Y equals pedal length. All right, let's run that, make sure it works. Ugh, hit the wrong button. <laughs> I don't even know what that button does. Run all chunks above. Okay, cool, that works. So there it is, we have our, our awesome, prettier looking, more aesthetically pleasing X and Y axis with the title. Now let's save that with Control S, check out our last final notebook file here. So we have our plots all in different tabs. It's just one way more, one other way to present this to your colleagues, your management, and don't forget all the code can be hidden. You can download the entire RMD file and open it up. And don't forget, Iris comes with it, so anybody should be able to run this. If you're doing it with a CSV file that is not from the Iris or not from the standard uh, data sets that come with R&R Studio, then you have to provide them with that as well, the actual CSV file, because this will not contain it. That's it for this one. We'll keep it short. The next one, I'm going to show you how to incorporate some bar graphs, different types of charts, maybe some box plots, things like that. So stay tuned. Stick around.